Hey there, Pro Church Media community. This is Jason again. In this tutorial, we're going to look at brushes inside of Photoshop. If you've never used brushes before, they're a really powerful tool that can help you take your designs to the next level. I'm not going to be able to look at every single feature of brushes inside of Photoshop, but hopefully this will give you a little overview that can help you jump in and uh, get acquainted with them. And the end result of what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is this image right here, uh, which is just a photo, a rectangle, and a brushed mask with some text. So as you can see, not terribly complicated, but still a really cool look without a whole lot of effort. All right, so let's start by getting the photo that we're going to be using. If you go to prochurchmedia.com slash freechurchphotos, you'll see this featured photos section and just click this view collection button, which will take you to an unsplash collection page, which has weekly hand-picked photos that are going to work great in all of your projects. So be sure to visit it weekly because it's updated all the time. This photo right here of the sand dune is the one that we're going to be using. So you can download it for free, use it for free. So go ahead and grab it and enjoy. All right, so I'm going to paste my photo in here and just scale it up a little bit. I think something like that will work. All right. Now I just need to draw a square here. And I'm basically going to be brushing out the square with a mask, and that'll make more sense as we go on. And I want to change this black color to more of this creamy sand color right here. So I'm just going to open up the eyedropper tool and just sample that right there. And I think that'll work pretty well. OK. So let's get into the fun stuff of brushes. So there's a few different ways you can access brushes uh, in Photoshop. Um, the first one is over here in this tool panel. And if you hover over it, it's going to give you uh, this little preview, I think. Of course, it's not going to. There we go. And it kind of just shows you what brushes can do, just a little overview. Paints custom brush strokes. That's all you need to know. All right, so once you select that, uh, your cursor will change to an image, uh, image preview of the brush that you would use and uh, whichever one you recently had selected. And if you start brushing, you can see this is pretty much what brushes do. And you can get all kinds of fun effects depending on the actual brush tip. And so tons of flexibility, but you'll see that more and more as we go along. There's a couple different ways you can access your different brushes. The first one is up here in the brush panel. And if you pull it down, you can see it has a list of all the brushes that are currently loaded into Photoshop. Photoshop CC 2018 finally gave us some brush organization. Um, and so I spent about two hours organizing probably a thousand or so brushes that I have, and it has made my life a whole lot easier. So um, I'm really happy about that. But these are all grouped up and you can uh, I have these, you know, grouped into different things. It's just a really great way to organize it. And so you can access all your brushes here, or you can also come up to your window menu, uh, scroll down to brushes, click that, and it's going to fly out this menu here, which is the exact same panel. I tend to like this one better just because it's easier to access, I think. Um, and so, yeah. All right, so... We know how to access the brushes, but how do we get some really great brushes? Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of someone named Kyle T. Webster. He, before CC 2018, he was basically the Photoshop brush wizard of the universe. Uh, that's the designation I just made up for him, but it's absolutely true. He created some really amazing brushes in all kinds of different styles that pretty much everyone who used Photoshop brushes was using. And then he was uh, just recently hired by Adobe to create brushes for them. And so the nice thing is that if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber, all of his uh, brushes are now available to you. But how do you get them? Uh, you'll want to just come up to this hamburger menu right here, click it, and come down to Get More Brushes. It's going to take you to Adobe's site where you can download all of his brushes and they're all definitely amazing, so you'll definitely want to download them all. However, the one that we're going to be using for this tutorial is found in the Mega Pack. And so if you click the download button, you just choose where you want to download it. And I usually put mine 
uh, just to keep them all in the same place. I usually put them in the Applications folder for Photoshop, and then uh, in the Presets, Brushes, and I usually just stick them on there. You can put them wherever you want to, of course, so that's all you have to do. All right, and then once you're back in Photoshop, you just uh, click the hamburger menu again, scroll down to Import Brushes, find the brush on your system, hit Open, and it will import them and you can group them, organize them, however you want. Um, so the brush that we're going to be using is, uh, I have it here in a Kyle T. Webster folder, and then I have the Mega Pack folder, and then I have the Paint Box folder, and I'm going to scroll down to one called, where is it? Rough Dry Fun Big. And so a nice name for that, and it uh, if you're in this brush panel and you want to get a better preview of what the tip looks like, you can just uh, zoom in like that, or you can zoom out to get a uh, better overview of all the different brushes. Um, and if you don't know what these uh, different, what this information means, okay, so this right here is just the title that the brush author assigned to it. Uh, this icon tells you that it's a brush tool. This image right here is just a little preview of what the brush tip looks like. And um, you can see it's the same over here in the canvas. And then this number right here is how big it is in pixels. And so that's important because you can definitely size this beyond that. The problem though is that this number is what basically the brush was created in, in pixels. And so if you go above that, it's going to start pixelating and might not look great. You can usually go down with no problem, but up beyond the original parameters sometimes just doesn't work out very well, so just keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that um, there are only a few things that you can actually brush onto, like an empty layer is one of them. If you have a background layer, you can brush onto that. But if I have something like a photo um, and I try to brush on that, it's going to um, give me this, I can't do that. Um, and if I click to try to brush, it's going to say this smart object must be rasterized. Do I want to do that? And so it's just a thing to keep in mind. Uh, if you ever just want to make just brush strokes uh, on their own, just create an empty layer and start brushing. And one final tip is you can use the keyboard shortcut B to get directly to your brush tool. So there's my selection tool. I hit B. I have my brush tool. And so that's uh, how you do that. All right, so just a few parameters we're going to go over just to show you how you can create variation without having to get into a bunch of settings. Uh, let me show you just real quick the brush settings panel. There's all kinds of different parameters you can change. To go into that would take forever, so it's best just to go in there and play with them yourself. But um, the brush tip shape is something you'll often use. You can change the size. You can flip. Uh, the direction of the brush tip. Um, you can change the angle of it, and so it'll change up how it uh, brushes on. You can change the spacing, which you can see right there exactly what the that does. And so there's you know just all kinds of parameters you can play around with to make custom brushes even more custom if you want to. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so but let's get back to those other parameters. Um, yeah. Okay, so this first one up here is opacity, and that basically just changes the opacity of each stroke of the brush. So if I stroke it on with 38% opacity, that's what it's going to look like. I can keep brushing on top of that, and it's going to basically build up over and over, which is, you can see it's making this brush look kind of interesting, and it's giving it a very different look. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't, but it's a nice way to add some variation pretty easily. Let me put that back up to 100%. Flow is basically how dense this brush is going to be. So let's say if I put it down to 16, you can see it's far less dense. And I can, you know, if I start brushing back over, it's going to start filling it up more. And so that's just another way you can add variation to your brush strokes. And so that's just a nice little way to do that. And um, you can, of course, combine these to get even more variation. And so that's, you know, 45% flow, 36% opacity, and you can get some nice brush looks. And so it changes it up and easy to add variation. And 
without doing a whole lot of effort. You can even change the blending mode of each stroke to get even more variation, which can sometimes be helpful, say if I have like a an orange stroke and I'm you can see it's multiplying that orange stroke on top of itself and so it's a, another way to add even more variation into it. So as you can see, brushes are pretty powerful things and it's not hard to get really interesting looks with them. Armed with all that, let's start uh, making... Oh, one more thing before we get into it though. There also is the smoothing parameter which smooths can smooth out your strokes and so here's kind of if I'm just doing kind of a, some circles and stuff like that, you can see, let me do this again. You know, there's kind of some imperfections where my hand is being shaky, trying to use the mouse. The curves maybe aren't quite what I want. With this brush, it's not too bad right there. I kind of messed it up. And so, you know, it's not the greatest thing. If we put the smoothing on, it starts to really just kind of, you know, smooth your curves and, compensates for the shakiness of your hand. And so this can be really great, especially with really fine-tuned brushes like calligraphy brushes or things like that. And so that's what smoothing will do, and of course you can put it somewhere in the middle if you want to, and it's going to split the difference. So that's just another way you can help yourself out with the brushes. But let's get into this and what we want to do. Alright, so I want my... I want to put just a layer mask on this rectangle because I'm going to be brushing out the image underneath and if you we did a masking tutorial just a few weeks ago so be sure to check that out if you want to know more about masking. So now that I have my mask I'm just going to start make sure my brush tool is selected which I do and I'm just going to start kind of brushing out this uh, mask and you can see it's revealing the image underneath and it has this great kind of sloppy messy edge brushed look and so it's just kind of cool without having to, I mean, I'm just randomly putting strokes in here, but it kind of looks pretty fun. And so I don't have a whole lot of a plan here. I'm just brushing away. And just like that, I have a yeah, pretty cool look without a whole lot of effort. And so it can be kind of fun. Oops. Um, if I put the flow down, I can you know maybe get a little bit of variation here on the edges just so it's not all the same, especially as it comes off the edges. And so that looks pretty great without having to do much. Um, but we can take it just a little bit further. And this is especially true if you happen to have some kind of drawing tablet, like a Wacom tablet. You know, I've heard people say Wacom. I've heard people say Wacom. I have no idea how you pronounce it. So I'm just going to say Wacom because that's how I've usually heard it. Anyway, I have like a low to low mid-end Wacom tablet, but even with this, I can get some pretty neat effects. So let me kind of show you what it does. So if I use the mouse and just kind of brush over, you know, that's pretty much a full 100% pressure opacity flow brush. Let me put the flow all the way up. You know, that's kind of what it's going to... Let me find another place here, like that. With my tablet, though, I can, you know, since I'm not pushing as hard, it kind of is not doing all the flow in there. It's, you know, also the strokes aren't as wide, and so I can start small and with more pressure get wider. And so if you're ever going to use Photoshop brushes, you might consider getting a tablet. Even an inexpensive one can give you a lot of different options um, than just using a mouse. So let me delete that. I'm going to put another mask on there and then just start... Uh, I might drop the flow down to like 62. I can always come back over and fill this in if I want to. And so I'm just making these strokes like we did before. Again, not a whole lot of plan here. Just trying to make something cool. I like how messy this looks and how it's got a lot of variation. It's not perfect in the inside. I can always come back and fill in some spots if I want to. And so that's kind of sometimes how turning the flow down can help you have some nice variation. I like these kind of streaky misses in there, which is nice. Kind of this weathered, hand-brushed look. I really like it. I think it's looking good. All right, so I think looking pretty good here. And I might just drop the flow down a little bit more. 
and just brush off the edges a bit. I'm just doing some short quick strokes to try to make it a little bit messier off the edges. And maybe I'll fill in here in some spots just a little bit. I think that's looking pretty great. Okay, and then um, as we saw in the masking tutorial a few weeks ago, the nice thing about using masks is that I can move them around if I need to. So I could just move this down like that if I want to. And maybe I want this kind of empty section more in the middle here. Let me find my midpoint. So there's my middle point right there. So I could just move the photo down a little bit like that. I can do whatever I want. That looks pretty good. Okay, cool. Now I'm just going to add some text in here. And I'm going to use a font called Big Caslon, which is a really nice uh, serif font. And I'm just going to say Dunes. Let's maybe make that a little bit larger. That might be a little dark as far as the text is concerned. I might just sample some of these colors here. And this is another little tip. Um, sometimes the way you can make your text feel more a part of the image is to sometimes sample colors that are already in that image. Uh, because like if I you know, put this pure black, you know, it's fine but it doesn't really fit as well as that kind of darker burnt red right there. And so that's just a little freebie right there. Uh, yeah, all right, this is looking good. And I think one final thing I could play around with is maybe the color of this rectangle that we masked. Um, I'm gonna just copy this hex color just to make sure I have it. But then I might just try sampling some other colors just to see if I can get some different looks. That's kind of fun right there. Um, but let me keep playing around here. The dark one. Kind of interesting, but not what I'm looking for. And I think I either like the original creamy color or maybe something that's pretty close to what we had before. It's a little bit different. That one's kind of nice too. That's pretty fun. I think I'm just going to stick with the original. Yeah, let's stick with the original. Okay, so just like that, we brushed a mask onto that rectangle, put some text on there, and it looks pretty awesome. And you can use this for whatever you want. So as you can see, brushes are a great way to just add some serious uh, power to your arsenal in Photoshop. And so uh, if you are using Photoshop, Go download those brushes from Kyle T. Webster, uh, brush out some fun stuff, and we will talk to you later.